My name is Imane Makubamidele from Diaspora TV, Switzerland. Here I am at the head office of the Swiss uh, Agency for Development and Cooperation with Mr. Ambassador Michael Gerber, the Special Representative for the Sustainable Development Goal. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, Your Excellency, sir, first of all, I'd like to thank you for accepting to grant us this interview. Pleasure, thank you. And since you are the special representative on the Agenda 2030 Sustainable Development Goal, how realistic is the Agenda 2030? Well, it is a very ambitious agenda, I have to admit that. And um, all the negotiators who were involved in the negotiation of, of the agenda and the 17 Sustainable Development Goals were and still are aware of that. Nevertheless, it is a realistic um, goal framework. If all the effort is taken seriously by all the governments and the private sector actors, uh, civil society, science community, and all um, uh, relevant actors in the field of sustainable development, then it is possible to achieve these goals. Nevertheless, of course, um, one has to be realistic. Um, because the ambition is so high, it will be difficult to reach each and every target within these 17 de uh, Sustainable Development Goals. 169 targets, and it would be an ideal world if we really reach all these targets by 2030. But it is doable, it is feasible, and it needs a lot of leadership and political commitment to fulfill uh, this, this job and, and make it happen. If not, it shall happen around 2030 or in the following years, but it has to be done. In June, we were opportune as Diaspora TV to be in a conference where you were one of the guest speakers in the podium. And I can remember uh, Mr. Antonio Howler. He asked you a very important question regarding the possibility of making the Agenda 2030 of the Sustainable Development Goal known to the general public of Switzerland. Then you, you, you reply by saying that there is a plan to implement this agenda into the school curriculum. How realistic is this? Is it an idea? Is there any other pilot already? Have you experimented it? Or are you planning to do something in this regard? Well, that's a good question. I believe, and I think that's also um, acknowledged by all the, the people involved when the agenda was created and nego negotiated, that this is a generation project. To make it known to the broad public, of course, there is a lot of effort needed. And the United Nations, they can do some of this effort, but of course, at national level, it is difficult for them to really land the agenda and make it known to everybody. So the national governments are responsible in some way or other to, to make it known to the general public. But there are also many other channels, instruments, means, people who have to take, take it forward and make it known. And one important uh, way to do that is, it, since it is a generation project, to sensibilize the, the youth and children. And of course, schools are therefore very important. And since we have um, curricula in Switzerland, which are um, already taking up uh, issues with regard to sustainable development, this would be actually the best entry point to make the SDGs known. Now, we have an organization that we work with. It's called Education 21, Education 21, and they have a specific mandate to do that. They, they bring the sustainable development problematic, the issues, the topic, the solutions to curricula all over Switzerland. And that's what is already happening. And now with the ESDGs in place, this is all also taking place. They integrate the ESDGs in that uh, way of sen um, uh, sensibilization work and uh, awareness raising in the curricula of schools. You know, Switzerland, we are a decentralized country. Yeah, with the language um, and so all. It's the cantons who actually decide, decide on what curricula they really take up in the schools, but many have committed already to the new curricula existing, which include sustainable development as a topic. So I think the, 
the door is open okay. to also integrate the SDGs in the curricula of schools. Doing the same event in, in Basel, you mentioned that there are about $12 trillion business opportunity in four sectors only. You just referred to four sectors. Then something came to my mind. I, st I, I was just wondering, if you look at some developing countries, you really have multinational companies who are there, and you have foreign companies who are there. And there's this issue of capital flights, where people invest 50, 100 million. After one or two years, the company already made the, hundred, the money they invested back, and they're still making a lot more from the economy of this country, making it very, very difficult for the host government to, to have enough money to do other things. How do you balance this effect? Or what's your advice for government of such country or for multinational companies or investors in this regards? Well, very important issue that you address here. Um, I referred the, the, the number of 12 trillion to a study that was conducted by the so-called Sustainable Development Business, Business Council, which really looked at the market opportunities that uh, are out there for business to, to, to seize uh, and, and um, support the sustainable development all over the world. So 12 trillion, I mean, that's a, that's a guess somehow, but it's based on profound studies that exist. Now, the problematic that you address is um, a big issue, and specifically in developing countries. We know that capital flight, illicit financial flows, um, tax evasion, um, corruption, all these uh, issues make work and development in developing countries very, very difficult. And they are among the, the, the biggest issues to overcome to achieve the SDGs at the global scale. Um, because this uh, capital flight exists, and we are aware of that. Switzerland has, for many years now, uh, engaged very, very um, um, strongly in the recovering of stolen assets and in bringing them back to where they come from, to the sources where they have been stolen. Um, Switzerland is the, the, the country that has... Um, recovered most of the assets that, that were stolen or um, came out of developed countries through capital, capital flight um, channels um, and bring them back to, to countries of um, origin. But it, these are very difficult political processes that take many, many years until the, the, the money is really recovered. And that's not the solution. The solution is that the capital flight uh, don't exist any, doesn't exist anymore. So we have to stop these, these um, financial flows in that direction. They have to be reversed. And that's what the 2030 Agenda also wants. And um, the Addis Ababa Action Agenda, which is actually the means of implementation framework for the 2030 Agenda, and which was uh, negotiated in parallel to the 2030 Agenda, also takes this issue up. And Switzerland engaged very strongly in that negotiation to in include these issues of capital flight and, and stolen assets as a, an important um, issue to, to address uh, with the financing for sustainable development, financing for the 2030 agenda. So the awareness is there, but the measures have to be taken, I agree. Ambassador Geber, thank you very much for granting thank us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.